Hello, it's Brian. I'm here for another video. Today I wanted to talk about making your own equipment for exercise. Now this is something that I've been doing for a while, but for me a main motivator is that I've had gym memberships in the past and I've been in areas where I could have equipment available to work out, but for my current situation in life, and doubly so now that everything's quarantined, but fortunately I already kind of had all this set up, before the quarantine started but for my current situation it works best for me to have a place at home that i can exercise now i don't have a lot of extra money to spend on fitness equipment and if you've ever priced squat racks um, weight plates literally anything in the fitness industry most of those things are very very costly so the the core of my workout equipment that i got is actually a a basic squat setup with an Olympic uh, barbell with some plates that I found actually on Facebook Marketplace for $75. And that got me about 165 pounds worth of weights put on the bar and a squat stand that I can use. Um, I've used done some, some DIY stuff to uh, give me some squat stands to catch the weight in case I fail out on the set. But the actual rack itself works for my squats and my bitch press and everything else that I need to do. So, but one of the issues that I have is I only had 165 pounds worth of weight, which is great for a lot of exercises, but some of my exercises I go above that weight on and I wanted some additional plates. So that's where we're gonna start this video. Let me hang this off to the side for a second. One of the things that I had in my basement, and I've had these for years, I actually went to uh, Express Oil Change at one point and I asked for some brake rotors because I was going to use one to make a forge. So this is one of a set that I got and I'll show you both of the ones that I got. And I've had these sitting around. I used one and I had four left over that were just sitting there because they gave them to me for free. They were going to get rid of them. And so I went and I weighed them. This set here came in at 12 and a half pounds. And the hole is a little bit large to fit on an Olympic barbell. So what I did is I took a piece of one inch pine board and this actually came from a crate that we use at work. So it was free. And I just cut it to fit the opening, cut a two inch hole in the center to fit the bar. And then I epoxied that in place. So now I have an additional with the two combined because they're 12 and a half pounds on each side. So that gave me an additional 25 pounds worth of weight to use on my set. And the other set that I had, a little bit heavier, and these were 15 pounds each. Did the same thing, got the piece of wood, epoxied it into the middle. So now that's an additional 30 pounds of weight. So if we're doing the math, that's an additional 55 pounds worth of weight that I can add to my bar. I started off with 165, so now I'm up to 210 pounds worth of weight that I can use, which is fantastic. So that really, especially for exercises like squat or the deadlift where I'm trying to get up into higher weights, that allows me to kind of stretch that using things that were either free or that I already had. Or in this case, they were free, but I got them a long time ago. So I already had them, so kind of both. So that's one thing. Um, another thing that I've done recently is I wanted to add a different exercise to kind of change up my routine um, I've been doing the weighted uh, barbell row, just, you know, bent over barbell row for a long time. But I wanted to get into weighted pull-ups and chin-ups. And I've used one of the commercially available belts before where you just had the, the D-ring that you loop the chain through on the belt and it just kind of pulls tight. And I never loved those, especially that single chain hanging down in the middle that the weight goes on. Um... I didn't like the way they worked. I've never found them comfortable and it's been years since I used one. And now that I'm looking to go back into doing that again, not only do I want not want to spend money on the basic gear, they do have belts out there that are better designed, that have two attachment points that are much more comfortable, but they're more expensive and I didn't want to spend any money. I looked online to look at some different tutorials. I took the ideas that I saw and I came up with my own design. Again, this is using stuff that I just had sitting around the house. And I'll probably do a little bit more on this specific one later and, and talk about how I built it specifically. 
But essentially all I used to make this was I had an old ratchet strap, right? It's got a hook on one end. The other end is just the end of the strap and I just tied these up into some knots to take rid of the excess because I didn't want to cut it off just in case I needed a longer strap later. Because uh, why? Why cut it off if you don't have to? Uh, but this would be the end that went into the actual ratchet itself. So I just used that part of the strap, a pool noodle, a carabiner. In this case, it was a locking carabiner. It doesn't have to be locking. I don't actually lock it, but that's just the one that I had sitting around. And I used one of these little quick links that I had sitting around as well. If you actually look at the weight ratings for the carabiner and the quick link and the ratchet strap, I think the lowest rated piece out of all of these is rated at about 600 pounds. I am never going to be <laughs> attaching 600 pounds to this. So it's well within safe limits to use for working. So what I did was I started with the end with the hook and I measured how long I wanted that to hang down to, for me to be able to comfortably wear it. And then at that point, I tied a loop in it, right? And then I ran the excess cord through the middle of the pool noodle. I put the quick link through this loop here to keep it from pulling through. And then I ran that excess through. On the other end, you can see the actual knot itself kind of pulls back into the pool noodle. I measured around my waist. I don't know if you'll actually be able to see my waist in this angle. But basically, I measured around myself to where it wouldn't meet. I didn't want it to come all the way together in the middle. I wanted there to be enough space between the two ends for that carabiner and that snap link to go. So that was the, the around my waist and my hips, right? At the other end, I just tied another loop. And that's where this carabiner goes. Now, I tied this one a little bit bigger, and I'll show you why in just a second. Tied up the excess here. And so the way this works, I put it around my waist, I clip it into place, I take my weights, I loop this through the center of the weights, and then I hook the other end of the hook there. That way the weight, there's actually space here in the middle, the weight hangs down there, it's very comfortable, the pool noodle gives it plenty of padding, if the pool noodle ever wears out, this was a dollar at the Dollar Tree. And I have several of them because I use these for a lot of different things from making PVC swords to have kids, right? So we use pool noodles. So I always have pool noodles sitting around. So that was a simple, took me a few minutes to come up with the design, put it together using stuff that I had laying around. Even if I had to go out and buy the stuff to make one of these, I could still probably do it for $10 or less. And I actually have another idea for a design, and that's why I said I'm going to shoot a video on the actual assembly of this. Because just using this strap um, and not using the snap link, if you just have the strap, the PV, and the, the pool noodle, and a piece of three-quarter inch PVC pipe, I have another idea for another design that I'm going to try out. And if it works, I'll shoot a video on that, and I'll talk about this some more on that one. So that allows me to do weighted pull-ups. And the last thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to have some fractional plates to, especially with my overhead press, when I start to stall out on that, be able to increase my weight increments by less than five pounds at a time. Now, if you watch my slinging projectile videos, you'll know that I have a collection of one pound steel ball bearings. Now, this is not really conducive to attaching itself to a barbell. If it was magnetic, sure, I could just stick it to the plates or something like that, but it's not. And I actually, that went through my head. Could I magnetize these? Sure, I could probably do that, but it'd be a lot of work and I really feel like doing that. But I had two of these sitting around. This is just a little mesh bag that came from Academy Sports when I bought an inflatable camp pillow. I bought two of those pillows. I kept both of the bags, right? Will it hold a ton of weight? No. Will it hold two pounds? Yeah, absolutely. So whenever I need to go from, like today I'm going from 110 pounds on my workout weight to 112 pounds. We'll use that as an example. So I'll put 110 pounds on the bar and then I'll put one of these in each bag on each end and I'll just strap that to the end of the bar. Simple. What I do is I take it and I cinch this part up 
tight on the bar and then I just wrap it around so that it's not swinging. Uh, it's not a lot, but I don't like that extra motion, especially if I'm lifting something heavy overhead. Let's just keep as little stress as possible out of it. So, yeah. so that allows me to do fractional plates again using things that I had sitting around already without having to go out and buy anything. Uh, would I prefer to have something simpler like an actual fractional plate? Yeah, those cost a lot of money for what they are. Um, I've seen the version where it's like the chain links and those are fantastic and I would love to do that because it'd be a lot simpler. But again, that would require me to go find something and spend money on it. This I had sitting around. So I hope you guys kind of enjoyed kind of a, a glimpse of that. This is my workout space slash workshop slash whatever I need to do space. Uh, so I'm going to go grab my workout right quick. But I wanted to, to share those ideas with you guys because a lot of times if you kind of look around in your life, you can find a way to do what you're wanting to do without having to spend a lot of money on it. And you should never let that be a obstacle, especially to something like your health. So thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you guys again soon on my next video.